<laughs> last, last year after, sorry? Last year after, after the, what, what, what do they say? What does a white man say? When the going gets tough, the tough gets going or something. Last year, right, when we got to the stage where we started dealing with uh, the more abstract stuff, the, especially I think the MIPS, MIPS type stuff, I was like, no, we should uh, go and report him to, to the yeah. dean so that he goes. I told man, go. I'm like, oh. I mean, good luck with that. Go and report. Why? Go and report me if you want to. <laughs> it's not my, oh, it's fine. It's not, my, it's not my fault that you can't understand things. But anyway, I thought, uh, but <laughs> I, the funny thing is, it doesn't matter. The, the, way, the way this works, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you bring in to teach this, right? It's the same thing. The content doesn't change, right? But uh, I'm sorry, but someone was using a permanent marker there, so uh, here's to hoping you can see. Sorry? Yeah. No, but we we finished off what we're doing. So we failed. Sorry? You failed what? Well, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember what, what mark you got, but here's, here's to hoping you didn't fail, all right? All right, so t today is, uh, we're just wrapping up here. I thought I always, I always feel like it's, it's important to talk about, um, so to talk about, uh, or to give a rundown of what we've done and to, to maybe just talk about a few other things that have perhaps nothing to do with the course. Um, which is why I thought it was important for us to have lecture series number 26, right? Which is the epilogue. Very sad that even in the last lecture there's noise, right? I wish it was primary school where we had class monitors. Class monitor, right? The noise maker. Yeah. Um, okay, so just to, I want to remind us, I'm going to start off by reminding us what we have done since we met for the first time in here. We've gone full circle now. On February 18th, and I think it was a Wednesday or something, I don't know, I can't remember. Monday, was it a Monday? It was a Monday, it was in here, right? Um, and incidentally, the exam is going to cover everything that uh, the content covered from February 18th all the way up to October 25th, right? Um, the reason I'm saying October 25th is because the tutorials still go, right? So you want to make sure that you go through the lecture slides and the notes and the references and the tutorial sheets, the questions in the tutorial sheets, very important. I would do, do that if I were you, right? Um, but, but essentially what we've done in the last, what, is it, nine, is it nine months or something, eight, nine months, probably eight months, is we were working towards um, these broad objectives, right? So everything we've done is tied onto these things here. Right? Um, I, and you notice that, so the objective, are, the obje these objectives are in no way aligned with um, the order in which we conducted the lecture series, but just to remind us that this is what we're trying to do. Essentially trying to better understand how computer systems work, how a computer works. And we realized from the beginning, from the very beginning that, in fact, this thing we call a computer system takes so many different shapes and forms, right? So computer, right, system, oh, computer system, nice, expensive iPad, hopefully. I don't know if this is a computer system there, right? Um, so many different things. I mean, these days, uh, in the 21st century, there's this talk of things like self-driven cars and you know, uh, areas like robotics and whatnot. Um, there was a time when, so it, uh, I, I think Zambia was in the news, there's even a BBC article. We don't even know what they were doing here. Apparently there's this team that went somewhere, a robotics team. But anyway, all those things are tied to computer systems, right? And we now understand how these things work. Everybody in here understands how these things work. And the beauty with that is because we understand how a computer works, we can go out there next year and learn how to write computer programs that are going to run on these computer systems. You know, we can go out there next year and, and get to understand how we can protect these things from potential threats, right, when we deal with computer security. And you realize that once you start covering those, those other concepts, it's a lot easier for you to understand what's going on if you were paying attention in this course, right? Once you start your discussion of is it uh, databases and web technologies, it would be a lot easier for you to understand, right? Data and communication networks, right? What we covered, coupled with, more importantly, what you covered with Edward Mwalimu in 1020, very important, fundamental concepts there, right? 
you will not be able to understand data and communication networks, or at least it will be harder for you to understand if you are not paying attention in EDU 1020. Now I told you, you must pay attention, but you, I don't know if you were paying attention, right, in EDU 1020. Everything, the beauty with what you're doing here is the, the way this, these courses are packaged, everything is connected. There's a reason why people sat in some room or some rooms and decided to say we are going to include this course as part of this program. Everything is connected. You must pay attention, right? Um, but anyway, so what's coming in the exam, everything we covered from history of computing. Hopefully you remember all the major uh, milestones, right? The different generations, the technological advance, advancements associated with these things. And, and we kept on coming back here, right? When we were discussing circuitry, I made mention of the fact that these days uh, you have a whole ton of transistors in here, but in computer generation number one, it was vacuum tubes. Right, they all, they, they, they all accomplished the same objective, the same goal, right? Controlling the flow of electricity, essentially, right? You must remember the different classifications of computer systems, which sort of scenarios this can be used in, why it is desirable for you to have a server-based computer system as opposed to a microcomputer, for instance, why? Where would you use this, right? Uh, we looked at so many different characteristics. Remember those aspects, right? Cost, size, yeah? Efficiency, all those different things, right? But anyway, uh, and it turns out there's a pattern as you, uh, if you look at these things individually, right? The size increases, the performance increases, the cost increases or something, right? Um, and then we spent uh, quite a bit of time on computer software, just because most, most if you look at the, the outline, we have a discussion of the causes that are coming after, after first year. You notice that most of what you're going to be dealing with is centered around computer software. Most of this stuff, right? From uh, 20, 2010, 2010, next year, is computer programming, introduction to computer programming, um, to 2021, which is computer security. You are, you are, for the most part, you're going to focus more on the software, right? Um, once you start looking at databases and, and web technologies, that's all software you're talking about, right? So which is why we spend quite a bit of time here and we know the different types of software, um, software is out there now, the different categories that are there, um, you know, uh, is it system software to application software and the different types of system software, the different types of application software. We realize that there's actually things like uh, portable applications, desktop-based applications, web-based applications, cloud-based applications, right? Which is then is becoming the in thing now. The vast majority of people typically use uh, cloud-based applications. Like, I hardly ever install uh, software on my machine, right? Because most of what I do is just, most of the tools that I need are on the cloud. When I'm creating my slides, I go on the cloud, I use cloud-based software. What's that? Google Slides. When I'm writing, when I'm preparing those um, assessments, cloud-based software, Google Docs, right? Those things that uh, you were taught by Edward Mwalimu, you know, like office packages, it turns out that, that uh, wait, when you, <laughs> it turns out, I don't know where the mm is, it turns out that uh, the so-called office package, even though, and I, I, how's, I'm, I'm a very strong proponent of cutting off some of these things, right? Why, why the obsession with office, Microsoft Office package? Why can't we focus more on Google tools? There are alternatives out there, right? Is what I'm trying to say here. Doesn't matter what you're using, but the fundamental concepts are the same. When you're using, when you're working with a spreadsheet application, doesn't matter if you're using Microsoft Excel or Google Cal mm, Google Sheets or LibreOffice Calc, which is what I like using myself, right? The concept is the same, right? Those fundamental concepts they told you with regards to how a spreadsheet application works. They apply all sorts of different applications, right? Which is why it's possible for me to open a Microsoft Excel document, right? Using LibreOffice Calc, which is why I can import that same file in Google Sheets. Concepts are the same. But you must remember everything that we covered in here. Licensing, right? You know, we, we covered so many, so many interesting things and it will come back to you next year, actually. Because it turns out once you learn how to program, the, one of the things you're going to have to do is you, you, you actually write software applications that you're going to share with other people. What do you do after you do that? 
you specify restrictions associated to that particular package that you've created. Is it going to be available free of charge to people? Is it going to be open source so that anyone can just get it and remix it or make changes and come up with a derivation or a different version um, of software that is similar to what you created, right? Licensing. We, we, we did so much. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that we, we, we actually spent so much time here. And I think in subsequent years, maybe we should do much more than we did in computer software, just because, right? And now we understand why you cannot go to, uh, to a Play Store, right? To the Play Store and download an application and say you're going to install it on that machine, on that machine. Yeah, we discuss all those things. We know, know why. And then we, we really spent a bit of time looking at, uh, we tagged it as machine structure, but essentially what we did was we, we narrowed down on the so-called von Neumann architecture just because it's the basis for most contemporary computer, uh, computer systems. Okay. Please, remember all of this. What makes this course, I guess, the exam especially, what's going to make the exam a bit, uh, mm, is because, <laughs> no, 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 it's because, it's because, it's because of, um, it's, it's because it's a, it's a full year, it's a full year long course, it's a full course which, which has two different parts. Parts that are supposed to be ideally separated, right, from each other. Um, so you want to make sure you, you revise all of these things, right? <laughs> well, I guess challenging. Not, not that it's, I was trying to avoid the word challenging because it's not going to be challenging. It's just that we've, we've, we've covered so much, right? Um, so you'd have to revise everything we've covered from February 18th up to now, which is, don't, don't even think, no, I'll just focus on, uh, on me because <laughs> and I'll talk about the structure of the exam. The exam has two sections, right? There's a compulsory section and, and the section where you get to choose what you want to, like what questions you want to attempt, right? So in, in, in the second section, it's fine because the second section will probably have components from computer, uh, computer systems and computer architecture, right? So uh, it becomes a lot easier for you to, to, to pick and choose there. But for the optional part, what are you going to do if you don't revise the things that we did last, last term, right? Anyway, and then we, we, we actually discussed um, the so-called uh, machine cycle, right? Essentially what happens to, or the first decode execute cycle, what happens to an instruction once you run a computer program. We now understand what happens behind the scenes when we're double-clicking those programs. Right? Once, not double-clicking to install, but once you install it and you double-click to launch or execute, the computer, um, the computer software. We we know what happens, right? It goes up there in RAM uh, or ROM, depending on what sort of computer system you're using, um, or what application you're working with, and then each of the individual instructions associated with that particular program are executed one at a time. They're the ones that are actually uh, go through this fetch decode execute cycle because essentially this is just one one of the many, maybe thousands or hundreds of instructions associated with a particular application package that you'd be working with on your computer at that point in time, right? So here's to hoping we understand the, um, the, this process and, and the components, right, on the CPU that are involved in the fetch decode execute cycle. And remember that for the most part, most of what goes on happens on the CPU chip itself, that small little uh, component, hardware component. Everything is there, the ALU, the control unit, right? Uh, all those registers we, we've been discussing, both special purpose registers and general purpose registers, they're all on that small little uh, chip, right? The, the marvel of uh, intelligence, right? People that think instead of uh, going out there to go and party. But you can think and party, I guess. Um, and then we, we had a discussion of uh, input-output devices, right? We, we started our discussion, uh, well, it was peripherals essentially. We're trying to better understand the different types of uh, hardware components that can be integrated with uh, our computer systems to enhance the functionalities of the computer system itself, right? It's why yesterday I was asking for USB type C and people didn't know what I was talking about. And it's like, oh, fine. What is the difference between a USB type C and Micro USB. Don't know. 
Sorry? So the difference is it's a new one, right? Okay, yes. Yes. That's one of the differences. It's both. Does it have those things that it could No. No. Whoa. What do you mean it's flat? Okay, so people have been reading, they know what we're talking about. That's good. We are happy. Correct, 1,000%, 1, I guess, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, but fundamentally, right, we, we realize that these different devices can actually be classified into different, um, different categories. The, uh, the other time, right, I, uh, I, I came across, I was cycling home and I, I bumped into this person who was, uh, I was shocked. They were dismounting the speed, uh, the, the speed traps, you know, the camera traps that they have along Great East Road, I didn't know. Apparently they move them around a lot, right? And this guy was, and I, I don't know, he's like, uh, I guess he's one of the drones, what, the people that do the, the actual work, right? Moving around, driving around and moving the cameras and downloading video content. But the funny thing is that um, the pricing, right? I don't know if he, he knew what he was talking about. He was telling me that apparently the camera itself costs, is it, he was saying, is it 600,000? Mm -hmm. What? It's a, what? Yeah, that's what he was telling me, which I sat there and I'm thinking, well, well maybe it's true. Um, maybe that's the price that they bought it at, but that's not, maybe that's not supposed to be the price that it should be bought at, right? Uh, but I thought it was interesting, and I, I regret I didn't get like a, a photo of that thing because I could have used it in next year's slides for us to be alive and around, right? Um, as an example of a peripheral device. Right, so these are all different things to think about, right? Uh, beyond this course. You know, hopefully now when you're moving around and you see anything that's related to computer systems, you think about our discussion, which is good. Right. Um, and then we, we had an in-depth uh, discussion of, of how these, these peripherals get to, to be interfaced with, with the CPU or with the computer system itself. You know, so how signals are essentially transmitted from the peripheral device to the CPU because fundamentally you're interested in interacting with the computer system. So what that means is implicitly you are, you are interacting with, this, with the CPU, right? And how, how the signal from the CPU uh, or whatever output comes back to the peripheral device. In the case of, uh, let's say, output devices, for instance, right? Um, and then we spent quite a bit of time, a lot of time actually, discussing computer memory, right? A lot of time here. We realize that in fact, so-called computer memory is split up into so many different uh, categories or classes, um, and they serve different purposes, right? Uh, so RAM, ROM, for memory, uh, we realize that on the CPU chip itself, there's more components, specifically you're talking about things like uh, different um, types of cache, right, or CPU cache as they call it. Again, remember that, so this word cache is, is used elsewhere, right? You can have um, cache associated with um, secondary storage, cache associated with your browser, for instance. Um, so we were explicitly tagging this as CPU cache because we're looking at the memory component that's located on the CPU itself. And also these temporal memory stores called registers. Even though during this particular discussion, we didn't really talk so much about registers because we already discussed registers during the fetch decode execute cycle, right? Um, and then we, we realized that, in fact, there are certain tricks that people have come up with to try and compensate for the fact that uh, because RAM is expensive, you only have uh, very little RAM that you can work on your computer. So what happens if you, you need more RAM? You can take advantage of the cheaper secondary storage and convert portions of that into virtual memory, which be perceived as RAM, right? But a lot was covered here. And then we, we decided to get an appreciation of, uh, before we set the stage to discuss uh, secondary storage, uh, computer storage, or secondary memory, we, we discussed how files are logically organized on the, on, the, um, on the secondary storage devices or secondary storage mediums themselves, right? Um, here's to hoping people people understand the uh, fundamental differences between regular files and, and folders, uh, where you use one uh, as opposed to the other, um, and why you need to logically organize files the way, the way we said they should be organized, right? Things to do with security as well, right? 
you remember those things? How you get to, to associate um, uh, permissions to files, for instance. Um, and then we, we narrow down to computer storage, the different types of computer storage. Uh, again, if I were you, I would focus more on, uh, I would remember the different characteristics we discussed, cost, size, speed, right? The key things that you'd have to look at when you're trying to evaluate one against the other. So if you want, you have the choice of purchasing, let's say, um, um, a solid state drive over a magnetic storage, um, a mag magnetic drive. What sort of things do you have to, to look at? What sort of uh, characteristics do you have to pay particular attention to, right? Cost, size, speed, those different things. And interestingly enough, we also, we also discussed um, network storage and cloud-based storage, right? Um, so how we take advantage of these things and why we would want to use cloud-based storage over network storage, right? Um, and during this discussion, I think we snuck in things to do with uh, backups. I don't remember that. Uh, hopefully people have started backing up, although I know they haven't because uh, for the longest of time I've been asking people, scan your scripts and share them, nothing. Scan your scripts and share them, nothing. What are you going to do, right? when you realize that uh, there was a bit of a mishap in recording your grade and you've lost your script. If the Moodle says you got a one, but you know that you got a nine, and you don't have the script, what are you going to do? Well, you didn't back up, I don't know. Okay, and then we had a discussion of uh, computer abstraction to get a sense of why this is important. And I think in subsequent, I guess, uh, years, we probably would, 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 would need to discuss abstraction before, I guess, at the beginning, because it turns out that it's a very important um, area, right? That's used in, in, in so many different um, so many different topics in computing. You realize that when we studied our discussion of the Vonoman architecture, we were using abstraction, right? Although it was much more important when we studied our discussion of computer architecture, anyway. And then, lo and behold, we did a bit of uh, very elementary mathematics, right, to do with uh, binary numbers. Why? Because a computer works with ones and zeros. Although we now know as experts that it's not ones and zeros, it's electric current, right? Don't act like a fool and you go there and you're like, computer, it's ones and zeros. And someone asks you, but how? You know, it's, elect it's electric current. We say ones and zeros because you are abstracting. You know that someone will get confused when you tell them it's electricity, right? So you just tell them it's ones and zeros, right? <laughs> Everything you're doing, you know, when you're playing games, it's ones and zeros, right? Everything, you know all ones and zeros. Please, guys, remember the rules we discussed in the different uh, things that we talked about when you're adding. What sort of rules do you have to follow, right? Dropping ones, one, 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 right? It's one, remainder one, all those different things. The fundamental differences between sign magnitude, one's complement and two's complement, all of these things we discussed, right? And we had fun doing this, in my opinion. <laughs> yes, we did. Well, well, I had fun doing this. Now, and then we, we had a discussion of um, a, a particular instruction set architecture that we we're interested in looking at because it's much simpler than the others that exist and also because um, there's a lot of resources available out there. The MIPS instruction set architecture. Right? Um, uh, and after our discussion, we, we had a, a very basic introduction to MIPS assembly language programming, different elements associated with the MIPS assembly language program, for instance. Right, people failed, right? Tell us the lines that show us a directive. Where is the line? Just like list the line and uh, all the lines, right? Directive, and there were people that were, uh, where you have an ad, right? Someone was saying this is a directive. I'm thinking, okay, no, right? <laughs> yeah, people were saying this was, <laughs> this was a directive, right? Where is the directive, where is the comment? People. And I, and I think this is the thing here. The people that probably when getting this right are people who are not reading. Because if you've been reading, if you've been practicing, if you've been attending the tutorial sessions, then I mean, it shouldn't have been hard for you to identify where the comment, where the blank line is. Where is the blank? Someone points at something that's different, right? Don't even know what a blank is, but hey. Um, and then, no, they don't. And, and then we, we, we decided to look at some MIPS instructions Specifically, our focus um, 
I, I guess at the very beginning was on um, arithmetic operations, right, and system calls, right. And we mentioned, we made mention of the fact that we didn't discuss all the system calls associated with MIPS, but just a few select system calls. Like for instance, we didn't look at how you get to read a character or print a character. Read a double, read a float, right, or print them out, because it turns out that the, the process that you follow for you to be able to do all those different things is different um, from when you're working with an integer, for instance, or a string. But, but the key thing here is, at least when it comes to system calls, is each particular um, service that you request from the operating system has a specified uh, list of steps that you have to follow for you to perform or to request that service. Like for instance, if it's printing a string, you know that the first thing you have to do is specify the system call code, right? And then you specify the register where that string is sitting in memory. And then boom, you issue Cisco, and then you print your integer. Um, and then uh, to, to wrap up on, uh, I guess, assembly language programming, we just had a, a discussion of looping constructs or loops, how to implement loops, procedures, and, and, and uh, branch, branch constructs, right? So how do we divert program flow, bearing in mind that the default execution is from top to bottom, right? Those branch conditions we discuss, and conditional branching and conditional branching. Give an example of a J format instruction, B. Really? <laughs> B is not even, it's none of those things because it's a pseudo instruction. And the, the funny thing is some people are even failing to give examples when the answers were at the end. I don't understand this. The answers were at the end, right? They were there. Okay, and then I, I guess this is, this is again one of those really important topics that we covered, so data encoding. Exactly how, how are these different types of data that we get to, to work with? How are they encoded? Um, so that human beings are able to interpret the data that's encoded. Um, and if we are to send them for processing, how exactly does the computer get to, um, I guess, uh, decode that information that's encoded in a certain format, right? So we, we focused on the fundamentals, really, textual data. Uh, we looked at sound, we looked at images, or colors, really, because images are, for the most part, made up of colors, right? So we, we now know, right, when you're working with a file, when you're sending a file, you know exactly how that data in the file was encoded. And you know that behind the scenes, it's nothing more than a stream of ones and zeros. No. It's not, what is it? Yeah, well. <laughs> the, the electric current is, is tied to how a computer processes that information. Encoding of information has nothing to do with the electric current, right? Encoding is just uh, how you're representing the information. Like, think about it from the perspective of how data is encoded on a CD. You're encoding it in, in, in a way in which the computer will be able to interpret it as flow of current or not, one or zero. So how do we do it in a, on a CD? Pits. Yeah. Yeah. Or picks and troughs or something, whatever you want. So, um, you use laser to just, uh, if, it's a, if it's a zero, then you probably burn that portion of the CD. If it's a one, you don't. So that as you are reading, you're able to, you, to associate the, the peak as, as maybe a zero, or yeah, a zero, and the trough as a one. That's all, right? Okay, so we, we understand this, uh, which is good. And in fact, we had an appreciation of this thing here, when you, see, you now know that uh, when you're working with an, um, I guess a, a software application for manipulating images and you're playing around with colors, whenever you see something like FFF00, you know that this is one way of representing colors in hexadecimal format. Why are you able to do this? Because we had a discussion of hexadecimal number system during our discussion of number representation. Everything is connected. Don't take my word for it, now you know. 
and then um, and then we, we we were interested in seeing exactly what sort of path that instruction follows as it's fetched, decoded, and executed. What sort of path does it follow, right? Um, how does the computer get to, to interpret what it should do? Right? So we're tracing those three different instruction formats. I guess to do with MIPS here, right? those ones and zeros. And for MIPS, it's the stream of 32 ones and zeros. What path do they follow depending on what sort of instruction you're working with? If it's an add instruction, what hardware components are involved? <coughs> Just to hoping people understand, uh, very important uh, concept in my opinion. Um, and it's not ones and zeros, now it's electric current, right? Um, and then we, we just glossed over, it was, I guess, an introduction to digital logic, um, logic structures or digital logic gates, if you want to call them that, essentially to get an appreciation of how these fundamental building blocks, the things we are calling gates, how they are used to build the hardware components that we discussed for the most part in here. So how exactly is uh, an ALU constructed using those logic gates? And because, by the way, right, and when someone asks you, uh, the ALU, it's not like it looks like this, right, and you know this. We are abstracting, we were abstracting here. This is not how an ALU looks like. Essentially, it's implemented using those gates that we discussed. And, O, exclusive O, NAND, NO, right? NOT, all those different gates are used to construct this thing. Uh, and in fact, it's not like the gate looks like this, right? It's transistors that you have on your, in your computer system that are used to implement these gates, right? But of course, our interest was not to go beyond the, um, beyond this uh, logical layer here where you get to look at how you, you implement these gates. Uh, but I do encourage you to read up on these things, very interesting. A while back I, I, uh, I was involved in a, um, in a microcontroller uh, programming course where we actually worked with, um, with, uh, with these, uh, I guess, toy, toy components to try and implement some of these things, right? They do that a lot in engineering. And, and I'm sure there should be like clubs that, uh, student clubs that owns, I'd be surprised if there aren't any, where you can go and uh, play around with these sort of components, you know, breadboards and things of that nature. Uh, so, so, this is not how it looks like, but it's just a, a logical representation of how an, uh, she said this is a, well, sorry, she didn't say, how an and gate looks like, right? <laughs> or is it an and, I don't know. Guys, so just to remind you, right, that everything that we covered is available, all the resources that we are used for this course, as we are revising for the final exam, they are available on the Moodle, everything. If I were you, I would re-download things because we made certain changes, right? So you want to make sure that you have an up-to-date copy or up-to-date copies of these notes. Um, there's nothing like the notes say, it's about what's true, right? So everything is on the Moodle, Everything that is on the Moodle, most of the things on the Moodle are on the course web page, right? Uh, and the course web page can be accessed using a quick response code. This, you got the course, we discuss quick response codes, right? Yeah. So you can access the notes here, although everybody has access to the Moodle as well, uh, I guess. But if you're at home and the Moodle is slow, you can just go to the course web page and boom, you'll be able to access the notes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the they were discussed by the tutor, yes, in the tutorial. People are missing classes. Yes. It will be okay, fine. We shall upload the solution. <laughs> yes, sir, I stopped uploading the solutions. We shall upload them. We apologize if you were inconvenienced, but don't know why you're saying it now. Okay, and then most of the things, right? Uh, I, I was using consistently an input device, right? To record my voice 
and I was also recording screencasts, and I was went out of my way here, and I was dumping them on our YouTube playlist. All the lectures are recorded, almost all of them. For technical issues, like yesterday we had an issue, my phone died, so I didn't record part of the screencast, and also I think this thing is 40, um, so the sound in segments of the videos is not very clear, so. But, but most of the, I think most of the crucial topics that we covered are recorded and archived, and in fact, we went out of, the, out of our way to extract portions of what we thought were important parts of all those lecture sessions. So if you're one of those people who's not interested in watching a one hour long video, you can just watch the segments. There's no excuse here, everything is there. Right? The cumulative um, continuous assessment will be available on or before October 25th. Um, and that reminds me, uh, quiz is it 19 will be available today at 23.59. Perhaps together with quiz 20, and then you have enough time to submit it, right? But an email will be sent out. But what you want to do, right, is ensure that you verify that the scores that appear in your Moodle gradebook match with those on your script. If there is any discrepancy, you must report so that we fix this, because it turns out that the things you're seeing on the Moodle are the things that are going to be used to compile your course grade, right? So you want to make sure this is correct. If there's any missing entry fixes, have this fixed, right? Then you want to do it before, uh, before you realize that, oh, you want to petition and whatnot, it takes time, right? So, sorry, yes. Yeah, so you notice that the reason there's been a delay is because of the confusion there. I'm, I'm, I'm vetting them. Then go through all the cheating cases will be caught for all the tech homes. I will find them. I, even if it's the last thing I do before I die, I will find. <laughs> I'm, I'm very serious. I will find them. And I, I excuse me. I, I take this. I take this very seriously, right? There are certain things that I take very seriously. You know, if, if it's if it's something that only affects one individual, right? I couldn't care less. But if it's something that has repercussions. To, to the, like the wider country or something, wider university. I take this very seriously. And there's nothing I hate more. If there are, there are very few things I hate in life, people that cheat. Uh, and I always, and I always avoid people that cheat. I stay away from them. Because they will, you see, the moment you associate yourself with someone that cheats, people will think you cheat. Even if you're a smart student, right? The moment that like, this is me, people are different, some people are forgiven. The moment I realize that you were involved in some sort of malpractice, I will stay away from you. I will avoid you, in fact, like the plague. Like, if, if, even beyond here, you know, like maybe you'll be some big fish and I won't be able to avoid you, but I will avoid you as much as I can. Because I don't want to be associated, you see, the moment you start associating yourself with someone that cheats, people will think that you're part of that, right? I remember we had certain lectures that would associate with people that we thought were if when I was a student. And my interpretation of that lecture was that he was uh, a, a person who was uh, a bit of, of that suspicious uh, uh, individual. You know what I'm talking about? A person who, who is not straight in his ways, right? I don't want to be that person. Why? Just because I choose not to be, right? So here's the thing, right? The, the final exam is three hours long, um, and it will consist of everything we've covered. Um, you want to go through, like I said, the, the notes and, um, and the tutorial questions. You want to revise the test. Um, and then it typically has two sections. Section A is compulsory, right? So you have questions that are compulsory. Whether you like it or not, you have to answer them. Or you don't have to answer them, but they count towards the the grading, right? And then section B is, is uh, optional. So I'll give you an example, last year, section B had uh, four questions and then you had the option to choose two out of the four, right? which was good. People, right, they avoided only one, <laughs> is it only one or two people answered this question? Look at how simple this is, right? This, by the way, this is a full ad that we discussed yesterday, right? And free marks, right? State the name of the logic gets, right? Yeah, it was S, gets, it's supposed to be gets. Does this thing, 
do you think is there such a thing as what is there, if we're talking about logic gate it's one of such things right if i were you and uh, i'm in the exam and you're confused instead of wasting time what is he asking here raise up your hand and then ask you're allowed to do that by the way you're allowed to raise up your hand and ask yes you don't understand the question nobody there's nothing wrong what's wrong with that there are times when, if you're going through the questions, there are times when a question might have a mistake. It happens. Which is why when you're writing that final exam, the course coordinator is always there as part of the team that's invigilating. Precisely for that reason. Yes? Oh, I was in such a situation last time writing, and you are in the other thing you are using, and I couldn't even ask. But I didn't No, I think I think my response was that because uh, the question that you were wanting to ask for the test, right? And the test is a special case in this case because I have to run across two venues, which is a, a bit weird. That's changing. But for if you notice, right, for questions that I I knew were not very clear, I would make an announcement in most of these tests, right? Especially those where you have numerous people asking questions. But for, 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 for questions where I know that it's just a case of you being unable to understand, maybe you're being confused in the exam, I'll just say, Pff. But yeah. isn't that the whole point of you being there? I'm supposed to be able to ask you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I apologize for that if that's the case. Which question was that, by the way? <laughs> No, that's okay. Which question? No, you remember the question number. Come on. Okay, fine. Yeah, but in the final exam, right? In the final exam, because you are in the same venue, that's not going to happen. You all sit in the same venue, by the way. So, oh, sometimes you're split up, I guess, if there's an issue with venues, I guess. In which case, the person invigilating will come and call the course coordinator and say, there's a question. Can you come there? Yeah. There's, there's, always, uh, there's always a query session. The people marking, when I'm marking, when the tutor is marking, we are human beings. Sometimes we make mistakes. There are people that, numerous people that have come up there. Query sessions, I always tell you, after these things are marked, there's a query session, come and see me on Friday if you have a concern or a complaint. Today someone came through, although I almost didn't attend to them, but they came through and told me you didn't mark this. It was a genuine case. They got a mark for that. So if, 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 you are, if, you, if you find yourself in a situation where you, quote unquote, uh, provided the right solution but you are marked wrong, you come and complain. Plenty of people have come, come forth. But, but in, in some instances, you think that it's a correct answer but you are not answering the question. What is your name? Uh, I am from the eastern part of the country. Yeah. Shower, right? I'm from the eastern part of the country, which is located near Malawi. Well, what you're saying is correct, but are you answering the question? You're not, right? You're not going to get marks for that thing. You know what I'm talking about, right? Answer, read, and understand the question, and then provide the correct solution. You get marks for providing the correct solution associated with the question. Yes. you get the mark. I mean, uh, listen, if, uh, it's, it's up to you to write half a page for a question that's worth one mark. And some people do this. You get a mark. If you want, you can go around in circles, but as long as and it would be read, although it's extra work for the person marking, right? We'll read that and you get a mark. And you, you've not, I think you've not, some of you have noticed that when I'm marking, I'll cross out parts that I know are irrelevant when I'm marking. I'm trying to remind you to say, the next time you're answering a question similar to this, this is all garbage, it's irrelevant, don't waste your time, focus on the more important things, right? It's fine, you can write if you want to, and I, God knows why you'd want to write half a page, right? One or oh, 0.5 marks, half a page. What are you doing? Okay. Um, this. A2 and A3 seem similar to me. 
No, this is the algebraic expression. So what, what sort of algebraic expression is associated with this gate? Right, so is it, is it, is it, is it supposed to be, is it supposed to be E, S is equal to A, yeah? And then the truth table is that table, right? So, two different questions. Yes. What? I can raise my hand uh -huh. and say, I don't understand what the word segment No. That's different. So it's, you can raise your hand, but you see, the response will probably be, uh, that usually my response, and there are numerous such cases, by the way, like last year, my response is always, that's part of the exam. <laughs> no, seriously. There are people that maybe you just black out and you're confused and you just say, this is part of the exam, right? Okay, um, guys, I just wanted to mention that uh, we are not perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. I wish I was like the Pope or Jesus Christ, but, but I'm not perfect, right? And so there are things that we could have done better in the course. I know this. Um, there's a university-wide uh, the university um, exercise that involves eliciting student evaluations. I've only seen, I think one person has responded to the evaluation, thank you very much. Um, it became available today at midnight, sorry? What? No, this is anonymous. I see the response, but I don't know who sent it. So you can write, uh, you can insult me if you want to, but hey, you will burn in hell, right? But uh, <laughs> for insulting light one if you want to. But, excuse me. <laughs> but, but what's important, right? What's important here is for you to be as honest as you can. So if you think uh, certain aspects of evaluation, you find things like, um, like, uh, uh, explanation of course objectives at the beginning of the course. If this, if you think that this was very poor, you just take very poor. But don't do this just because you got low marks and you're like, ah. well, you know, it's this is meant to improve, right? So that next year I'm better at this, right? <laughs> and I know there are people that do that, right? So I'll just say everything is just going to be very poor, very poor, very poor, very poor. <laughs> And I'm like, you'll be, you'll be an outlier, right? It turns out that the, the more the more responses we get, the, the 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 I think the more accurate the the interpretation of this thing is going to be, right? Even if there are people that will will just take very good, very good, very good, but we are looking at the average responses, right? It's just look at like scale. So please do this. This is really this is extremely important. It's optional, of course. Again, this is anonymous. No one will know that it is you. So don't think that, no, it's anonymous. Well, I can swear before God, but I, I don't know if you trust me, but it's anonymous. <laughs> serious, this is anonymous, so. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, let me, let me show you one of the responses that came through today. Um, IP address, what do you mean IP address? What, you weren't paying attention in Edward Molimu's course, were you? No. Yeah? Shh, there's a question here. Yeah, yeah. Do you know why it's done through the Moodle? It's possible for me to just go and hire people uh, at the market or at the bus station, say, log in here and then just tick in very good, very good, very good. It's done on the Moodle because you want the people that are registered for this course to provide feedback. No, let me sh show you just now. You don't be. This is. Hey, by the way, I talk about uh, educational technology just now. The way such tools like the Moodle are implemented, what sort of factors you take into account, it turns out it's a classic case of a piece of educational technology, right, for administering um, learning activities and whatnot. But it's anonymous. It is anonymous. No one will know who you are. Look at this. No, I'm not the administrator. You haven't been paying attention, have you? I keep telling, I told you from the onset, I'm not an admin. I only have certain privilege, certain things that allow me to, uh, to, the people that administer this are in CICT. 
No, not even they can. It's anonymized. <laughs> so I'll give you an example. You see, you see this thing that says uh, new questionnaire submission? This is what I see. Oh, let me just... Uh, I don't know if people can see this. No. You see this? It just shows me. It just shows me these details. But I, I don't know who sent who sent through this questionnaire here. This response, right? Um, so this person just provided my details here and uh, the question for. Let's see what they said, right? Explanation of course structure. Very good. Thank you very much. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> now I know I've been good, right? But uh, <laughs> ability to, to explain new concepts. This person thinks it's just good. But what's interesting was uh, you, the way you know this was a listen, the way you know this was a this, this is subjective, by the way. You see, your interpretation of whether my explanation of new concepts was good is based on you as an individual. You might think I was good or bad. Right? But the thing is, we're looking for the average. So if more people say he's bad or very bad, then you know it's bad. How are we going to help if there are no specific explanations? Uh, I think there should be. If, there are no, if you notice here, right? Huh? This was clearly. Which is fine. For me, right? Even though this is by the quality assurance department. For me, I'm interested in these, which is why I configured it in such a way that these responses are sent to me. I'm interested in this because I'm going to look at where I don't score as good on those. So to say uh, I'm not good at providing feedback on works, then I'll try as much as possible next year to improve on this. That's why this is important. You might think. We are crossing paths, right? Okay, so please, and then there'll be a separate evaluation which won't be anonymous. Things and how this particular, this is for me, the survey, this is for me. This is for UNSA, right? Apparently, the promotion and evaluations. So if, if a person is bad, you don't get points to be promoted, right? Go figure. If you are curious, don't have access to the program document, a lot of exciting things. Next year, I do know that you'll be interacting with their way, right? Piela is a colleague of mine. We'll be taking you in computer programming. This is a three-year-long course. And then you also do a bit of computer maths. Most of what we did in Boolean algebra is coming back, which is why I did mention that I was glossing over things that you're going to cover in computer or computational mathematics. So this is first semester. And then in the second semester, this is a half, half course. So you do it in just term one. And then in term two, you look at information security. And then, this is tagged as a methods in library and information science because it's a department um, course. This is a research methods course, extremely important. You want to pay attention here because in fourth year, you get to work on what they call a capstone project. And you expected to reuse some of the things introduced here. Pay attention in this course, right? All the things, statistics, the statistical tests that you have to perform and whatnot, uh, descriptive statistics, you know, how you design surveys, how are you going, how you design something like this, and what what sort of elements or items you include to measure metrics you're interested in, you learn how to do those things. Um, and then if you're curious as to what's happening, pretty interesting stuff as well. I mean, you get to look at, uh, I think there's a database and web technologies course this is how important this area is, by the way. If you're going to do something in one year, they're telling you it's an implicit signal to say this is an important area, right? Um, when I was a student myself, an undergraduate student, I only did uh, two database courses. But guess what? After graduating, I spent the next four years working as a database administrator. My entire life revolved around working with this specialized piece of software called a database. That's what I did. I woke up in the morning, I went to work with databases, right? Upgrades, installation, maintenance, right? They paid me quite well, I was happy with that, but it became boring. What I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is this is an important area, right? 
Everybody works with data now, right? That data has to be stored somewhere, and usually it's in a database, right? Um, and then you get to learn, I guess, how to uh, develop web applications. So if you're curious as to how Moodle can be implemented, you learn this here, right? And you can only learn how to develop web applications if you learn the fundamentals. Everything is connected. Mother, son, father, and whatnot, right? <laughs> Um, and then, guys, I want to encourage you to pay particular attention to this. Most of what's going to be covered here is um, technologies that you can use to be an effective teacher, like Lighton, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I... No, I'm enrolling, I, I'm going to enroll into that. And, yeah. yeah, I know, I, but I mean, if you of technology, right? It turns out, right? end up uh, teaching like light it turns out that the, the environment has changed right it's not only chalk and board and permanent markers right you use technologies if, if you go in most of these find kids using you know those tablets fancy tablets and if you don't know how to fix like which is bad really. I don't know how to send the email I, you, you write the board in the subject right because you went paying how are you? Okay. Uh, then I think I get to go. Those of you that are interested in this, you get to go and do school experience. Like EdTech. No. This. Yes. No. no. <laughs> you, this is mandatory. <laughs> it's it's mandatory because it's part of. Um, the design spending so much money funding people to do this it's not just here the people at CBU the people at Zik College there is Have people that can trouble. Have a Moodle instance. You can do is A couple of different things here. If you think uh, 
area that you think is not going to be polluted by many people, an area that you think very few people will get into. You and start asking you trivial things and you sit there it's trivial because you did the they'll be coming and paying you money hopefully Shh, sorry hey you can't do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven quarters at fourth year want to do Come across how you can accomplish. take advantage of these people. But and I'm sure mom and dad told you to stay away from those people, right? Uh, but it's up to you again, anyway. And So far. If you want to be a sound engineer or whatever they call themselves, to develop expertise in that area, right? But do twenty thirty. Right? And a knowledge and information based society.
pushing in funding to these they are laying fiber throughout the country, right? So many opportunities in computing in general. So don't think that uh, it's just teaching. Teaching is nice, light on chose teaching. I, I, sometimes, oof. And queries from students, right? Handling cheating cases, academic dishonesty. <laughs> Not easy at all, right? It, it turns out you need, you need some people's skills you handle someone comes in and they look like they're all sad and you can't commit suicide, so don't kill yourself, it's just life. Uh, this is, anything in life can be fixed, that was a bad joke, but anything in life can be fixed, I assure you. Don't think that, uh, uh, don't think that just because things are not going well for you, then it's the end of the road, no. I assure you, right? Um, it's trivial stuff, it can be fixed, I and mean, it's not, there are more important things to worry about than a cost grade, right? Okay, um, and if, if I were you, right, a couple to taking advantage of people around you. Don't think that just because uh, you're dealing with, oh, it's Dr. Kandelo, then you, you feel scared, right? And you, there's some people who even kneel, right? And they're like, okay, kneeling is fine, because I like, guess culturally it's tradition, I guess, but, but there are people just like you. You'd be surprised, right? For some people, they look like they're not approachable, but you just go to their office and you explain why you're there, you'd be surprised what sort of reception you'll get. If you want to discuss something with a member of staff, just go there, don't fear them. Well, what's the difference between them and you? Well, maybe the age, I guess, right? Nothing else. A person just like you, right? Um, and also, if I were you, I would uh, develop the habit of interacting more with senior students so that you, it's always wise to learn from mistakes made by others, right? If you were interacting with the senior students, you would have known that cheating was wrong, but you weren't, were you? Um, yeah, I'll keep on talking about this. I'll never stop, right? Um, and then uh, there are some links that I would encourage you to go and look at. Uh, you want to check out MTech, Amazon Mechanical Tech. You, it turns out that you can perform micro tasks here uh, using some of the skills that you've learned and any little bit of money. Instead of just Facebooking, you can do this, right? If you go to places like, uh, is this Upwork? If you go to places like Upwork, you notice that some of the skills they're looking for are skills that you've acquired in maybe data analysis using Excel. You can do this, you know why? Because when you're interacting with someone on this platform, they don't know who you are. They don't even know that you're a first year or something. As long as you are an expert in this area. I do encourage you to do this. Please visit these, these places. This is quite nice stuff to get used to. Especially as you're going on vacation. Don't just go on vacation and do nothing. Uh, if I was teaching you next year, one of the very first things I would have asked you was, what sort of online courses did you do during the VAC? What sort of new skill did you acquire to do with this course, right? Okay, um, and then uh, in closing, guys, please, the surveys are quite important. I, I, I would really appreciate it if you'd uh, fill out the surveys. And I assure you these are anonymous. I'm recording this, right? And I swear to God, these are anonymous, so the gods, if you pray to different gods, right? I'm not joking, these are anonymous. No one will know who you are. Just make sure that these are like uh, honest responses, right? Um, and then in case you think that you need to come, come and chat to me before the exam, just take note that I'll be working from out of town during this period, so I will not be around in this period, and this period, and that period. I'm not sure about this period. If I'm not around, then someone else will invigilate on my behalf. But I'm certain I'm not going to be around this period. So make sure you see me. If you need something fixed to do with your CA, you better see me outside the, the outside these slots where I won't be around, right? The advice I have for you, <laughs> stay away from cheating. And this, this, is, this, this sounds like a joke, but I assure you, you want to stay away from this, right? A fourth year student was, um, is it fourth year or third year? Last year, in last year's exam. They were, is it expelled or excluded? They were caught with material in the exam, in the final exam. The penalty for that is you're expelled, right? Chucked out. You've wasted three years of your life. Because you've been chucked out, what do you do? You have to go and start from scratch, somewhere else, right? It's tainted. Your image is tainted because your colleagues know who you are now. They, they, they will remember you for being the person that cheated who, are, who was caught in the exam. Oh, you remember that person who was caught? I met her, right? <laughs> and I'm, yeah, but, uh, okay, so guys, I, I, I must say I, I really did enjoy the last uh, 18 months, um, I think. 
and like I said, I'm not, I'm not a perfect person, but I always strive in life to be fair and just. I am always a fair person. Um, there are people that have written to me recent, as recently as I think two, maybe three, three days ago, uh, I didn't submit, uh, please find a touch assignment, I didn't submit it. I've been fair, you are given days to answer something that you should have done in 11 minutes. But because you decided to procrastinate, you didn't submit this. And I just politely said, just go and read the rules, because I'm trying to be fair and just. If, I, if, 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 if there's an exception for you, um, I'd have to do the same thing to people that I said no to in other things that they did, that are tied to the syllabus, right? Why say this? Because this is the last time you are seeing me, well, not seeing me, I guess, it's not like I'm dying, but this is the last time I'm teaching you. Uh, you probably see me walking around, just say hi. Uh, I don't think I'm with threat or something, right? So, I don't know how I look like to people. It's like, maybe I look like this mean person, but uh, just say hi, right? In the, when you meet me in the corridors, the School of Education is a small building. You meet me next year, year after next, the other year. Just say hi, it's nice to say hi. If you want, you can always walk up to 515 during office hours and say hi, right? Or, or maybe outside office hours if you find me in the office. And, um, I don't know if there are any questions. <laughs> yeah, saying hi is good, right? And believe me, I know this for a fact. There are, I can see them right now. Well, I can't see them literally, but there are going to be very important people coming from here. This is how life works. There are always people like that, right? People that are going to hold influential positions, which is why I'm saying say hi, because I'll be able to come to you and say, you remember me, I taught you, right? <laughs> they, they come to me, right? This other time I met, uh, I, I met a, a teacher who taught me a while back, right? This is how it works, right? This is how life is, by the way. But All right, so I'll see you on the 20, 20th, right? Yeah, there's a question. But I won't be there, I guess, on the 20th. So, um, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've been rough. Yes. Life is rough. We didn't try to understand so much. Yeah. And that time when we were very invisible, we were sorry for that. Yeah, especially the cheating cases. But... <laughs> yeah, this is cool. <laughs> that, that was bad. Horrible. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was, this was really good. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I can be more ruthless than this, but because it's first time offenders are usually given a, a pass, right? In fact, even the courts, the courts of law, they'll take into account that if you are, if you are killing a person for the first time, not killing, but maybe <laughs> if you are stealing for the first time, <laughs> the penalty will be <laughs> less than if you're stealing for the second time. But yeah, all right. So thank you so much, Mr. Lightman, for Sure. Keeping us okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. Yeah. No. Go and read the syllabus, right? Well, I mean, this is the thing here. Now, why do you want to? Excuse me. Why? Why do people always want to spoil a good moment, right? <laughs> And I, I, I really don't. I, I thought we. I thought we. <laughs> excuse me. Why, why do you want to do this, right? You, do you remember this? I, uh, the first time, the first and only time that I printed out a document to you, I printed out this document. The reason I printed out this document is because of. Excuse us, sir. Of class here. <laughs> And this is disappointing. I know him is from last year, right? Why? It's, from, it's, it's the second year from this program. Is there anywhere here? Can you see the distribution of marks? Twenty <laughs> percent quiz, thirty percent test, fifty percent exam. I know we just spoiled a good moment.